Welcome back to Katrina the Cat Reads Chapter 17 of The Walking Dead Hope. I'm Katrina the Cat. Let's continue where we left off, okay? When Omar left, A.G. remembered the package he was holding in his back pocket. He took it out, examining the wrapping paper. It seemed to consist primarily of old newspapers, twisting around a small box around three inches wide and four inches long. He ripped the paper and and ceremoniously opening opening the box immediately after inside it was a small watch it had a leather strap attached to a bronze case its frame was its frame was gold plated going around the face of it the silver handle the silver handles were a little torn around the edges but otherwise they worked well aj turned the watch to, in his hands finding a phrase in a language he didn't recognize Prima que estuviste aquí. Deja tu huella. He scrunched up his nose in concentration, trying to remember having learned those words, but nothing came to mind. Maybe Lewis would know. He searched the room for his adopted father, frowning when he couldn't find him. Asim stood a few feet away, talking to Ruby. He tapped the man on the shoulder, making him turn and smile at the boy. Hey, Asim, have you seen Lewis? I think I saw him and Clem go to their room, he said. Clem said something about not feeling well after he tried the deer. I think Omar was a little offended, actually. He and Ruby chuckled together, leaving AJ out of the loop. He apologized to AJ once more. AJ frowned, looking down at the watch in his hands. He pocketed it and rushed out of the music room, leaving Asim to talk to his girlfriend. The boy marched through the, through the halls, heading for Clem and Lewis's room. When he approached it, he saw the drawer was ajar, a faint light escaping the crack. Before he could burst in, he heard voices coming from inside. You feeling a bit better? Lewis's voice drifted through the crack, stopping him in his tracks. I guess, Lewis replied. No, I guess, Clem replied, her voice hoarse. Unless you could count throwing up your lunch better. Not the word I'd use, but close enough, Lewis said cheerfully. He always did seem to try to lighten the mood. What was in that deer? Clem exclaimed. Don't say it too loud, unless Omar comes to finish you off. AJ dared a peek through it, seeing the room beyond. It hadn't changed much since the last time they'd been here. They'd been there. An acoustic guitar lay against the drawer by Clem's bed. Clem herself... Clem... Clem lay herself down on one of the bunk beds, her right hand clinging desperately to the edge of the metal bucket. Her face was pale, but she was still smiling nonetheless. Nonetheless. Is she sick? Is she sick? AJ thought nervously. Lewis was sitting by the a eh, by the chair by the bed, holding her left hand with the boot with both of his own. His trench coat was draped over Clem's shivering body. Why would she be shivering in the middle of summer? Lewis bent down to kiss her fingers, making her smile once more. The baby is taking his toll on the toll on you, huh? A little, she agreed, her gag reflex making her reach for the bucket. Fortunately nothing came out. But she's worth an M more. Lewis placed one of his hands on her stomach, looking at it with a face of pure adoration. When did we get so lucky? he whispered, drawing small circles with his thumb. I honestly don't know. AJ kept looking at the, as the couple stared at each other, their eyes seemingly sparkling. At one point, Lou snapped his fingers and turned in, turned in his seat, grabbing at the, the guitar by the mast. He propped it up on his leg. <coughs> Sorry. Strumming the strings softly. Want me to play a song to help you with your stomach ache? I don't think that's how it works, but give it a try, she teased, lying back on the pillow and closing her eyes. Just nothing country this time, she urged, getting a playful slap on the shoulder from Lewis. You wound me, Lewis cleared his throat, strumming the strings one more time before placing his fingers on along the mast. AJ had asked himself to teach him to teach him to play, but unfortunately his fingers were still a bit too small for that guitar. So he settled for the piano in the meantime. Lewis began a soft melody, his notes high and heavenly. 
AJ stared at the guitar as the freckle man effortlessly plucked the strings at just the right time. Je Clem hummed along as the melody picked up. Having heard the song a thousand times, AJ had heard it a couple of times, though his though this time Lewis was playing with much more gusto than normal. As he reached the first stanza, he cleared his throat. Here comes the sun, doo 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 doo. Clem hummed contently, her voice still hoarse. Her eyes remained closed as Lewis continued with the song. Here comes the sun, I say. It's all right. Lewis looked down at his wife and beaming a smile on his lips. Even AJ could see his brown eyes were alight with joy. Little darling, it's been a long, cold, lonely winter. Little darling, it feels like years since it's been here. Here comes the sun. Here comes the sun, and I say, it's all right. He closed his eyes, seemingly focusing on playing his guitar. As another rather complicated bit came, Angie was not looking at him though. His eyes were glued to his adopted mother, humming happily as her husband serenaded her. He noticed her hands were on his were on her belly, her thumbs drawing circles to the rhythm of the song. Little darling, the smiles were turning to the faces. Little darling, it seems like years since you've been here. Here comes the sun, doo 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 doo. The couple sang in unison, Louis' melodic voice clashing with Clem's raspy one. They didn't mind though. Here comes the sun, and I say. Louis paused for a moment, his palm covering all six strings, looking down at Clem, whose face had had regained some of the color she once had. Almost as if they practiced it, they reached out for each other, holding hands in between them. He leaned in and planted a soft kiss on her lips. AJ scrunched up his nose at the sight. She let out a satis satisfied hum, tilting her head as she gazed into his eyes. They nodded thrice, seemingly counting down, and, the and sang the last lyric. It's all right. And that was Chapter 17 of The Walking Dead Hope. The Walking Dead fan fiction written by Goofy Gomez. What do I think of it? I actually find this chapter to be really heartwarming. Pretty cool at the same time, too. Um, I felt very sorry for Lewis when I when I read the first part of the chapter with with him not seeing his father for fourteen years. That almost remind me of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air episode where Will has hasn't seen his father for the last fourteen years. Oh man, I feel very sorry for Will. But anyway, um, I feel sorry for for Lewis too because his father was not very nice to him. I'll tell him, I'll tell you that. And when and and another part that I do like is when Clementine punched Lizzie because all for all for her kissing Lewis while while she was held captive. Now that was what I call. That's what I call kicking butt, sister. And as for AJ's birthday party, I find it very heartwarming. And the last part right there, I think AJ, I think the song that, that Clementine and Lewis were singing was called Here Comes the Sun from the Beatles. Oh man, I love that song. I should definitely sing that in, in Sonic and Friends Sing. Maybe, I don't know. But other than that, this chapter is really good. And so far, this story has been really nicely done. It's really nicely done. Now, what do you all think of this chapter? Did you all like it or did you not? Feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. And are you enjoying this story so far or are you not enjoying it so far? Don't forget to let me know in the comment section down below. Well, I better get ready for my shopping trip with Lavinia, Amy, Cream, Cosmo, Rouge, and Blaze. But thank you all very, very much for watching. This is Katrina the Cat, signing off. Ciao!